I found out that Glenn Waddington was vacating his seat. And uh, so I spoke to Glenn about it, what the job was like and all that, and, and it, because I felt that it was important for somebody, uh, my generation, native to Shelter Island, to fill that seat. How old are you? 43. Okay. And uh, that was the beginning. Uh, then I started talking to uh, other people about town who were you know, busy with the politics of the town and know more about it than I do. Uh, and they were very positive about uh, what I could bring to the town board. Shelter Island is, is uh, it's, it's unique in many ways, but not unique. It's not unique in the fact that it's a small town and the people act a lot like people do in small towns I've lived in in other parts of the world. Yeah. But I've never lived in a town where people come together in times of trouble like they do on Shelter Island. It's, uh, we can bicker and argue amongst each other, but it's like brothers, you know. Don't try to do it from the outside. This island is a, this is a great place to be who you want to be and uh, survive. Yeah. Well, a plumbing found me as a kid. My father was a plumber. And uh, I demonstrated an aptitude for it very young. And, uh, I tried to do a lot of other things besides be a plumber because uh, you never want to do what your old man does. You know? yeah. um, I found out along the way that that horse was paying for all the other education that I was getting you know, because I plumbed my way through school and things like that. So I stuck with it. And uh, the next thing you know, it's taken me around the world. You, know, so you I, were in Iraq, right? Yeah, yeah I was in uh, helping put the uh, infrastructure back together after we destroyed it. How did, how did you get that uh, job? Uh, actually, I heard about it while I was working the commercial construction in Alabama again. And uh, I called, and they said, well, you can apply online and all that. By the way, what do you do? Well, I'm a plumber. And at that time, I was a plumber for like 20 years. You know, I'm a 20 year plumber. They said, wait a second. And they wanted me in Houston two days later. Wow. And two weeks later, I was in Germany. And then I was in um, Dubai. And then I was in Baghdad. Uh, as a contractor, as for, a contractor for the military. Yeah. And how long did you do that? 18 months. Wow. And uh, I went from going over there as your average plumber and ended up in uh, project manager. I R and R in Thailand, and um, you know I was thinking about what I was going to do next because my contracts were up, and do I want to go back and do this again? About that time, my father called, and he says, "Well, you know, uh, I could really use some help back here on the rock if you're, <laughs> you know, if you're looking for something to do." Yeah. Know? And I guess he was a little concerned about me being over there as well, but that made my decision easy. You've been in the fire department for how long? Oh, uh, now 20. 22 years, but I was inactive by the time I was gone. I wasn't really, you know, yep. I had a leave of absence, and then, so I've been active for, I guess, 13, 14 years. 13, 14 years. Are you, uh, are you an officer in the department? Have uh, you been a chief? I'm, and, I'm a chief now. You're the, I didn't, okay. No, I'm, a, I'm a second assistant. You're second assistant yeah, chief, so, so I'm, you're. I'm the baby chief. I'm a pretty uh, practical and uh, common sense oriented person. Uh, I like to be able to to, to help the town board to play the tape all the way through when they try to make decisions and I, and I think my experience is valuable on that because uh, it only dawned on me recently that this is something I've been doing most of my life which is beginning a project, forming the project, helping people come up with the project, planning, getting through the project and completing the project and being able to see what, hap what the consequences of each decision are on down the line and being able to consider them before the consequences happen right. more often than that, which is really more important than experiencing the consequences. Do you think they're not doing that great a job at that right now? Well, um, well, let's take, take for example, um, the uh, non-conforming, the, the changes to the non-conforming businesses on Shelter Island. I'm not sure that that's something that I would have liked to have seen as a town board member go out to the public as it was. Right. Uh, as I understand it, the CBA asked for definitions, uh, yeah. you know, like def, def, uh, defining the word voluntary. Yep. Well, rather than that happening, it got removed and the laws got completely changed. Whether they meant to do it or not, uh, it happened. Right. And uh, those are the kinds of things that I think I can help avoid happening. The causeway regulations, I think, deserved a little more study before they were uh, put into play. Um, Shelter Island has a problem. Whereas if they overstep their bounds, they're buying the property whether they like it or not. 
I think that there's uh, kind of a lynch mob attitude coming out of a few areas, you know, uh, against these homeowners because of the fear of them building on this property that needs to be quelled. One of the things that upsets me about government in general is how far into our lives it has gotten. I don't, I don't think it belongs as far into it, you know, our lives as it is. Uh, yeah. I don't think schools raise children. I think parents do. You know, I, I don't think the government is spending our money wisely by getting further into our lives. I don't think that it's government's intention to get further into their lives, but what happens is you start trying to um, placate every special need that comes along the way, right. and you get lost in that. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm not entirely sure how to get out of that. Yeah. You know, uh, because, you know, there's a paradox, and we're seeing it in the federal government right now, where if you want to stay elected because you want to do good, so you don't want to make anybody mad. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going to do the right thing, somebody's got to lose. Yeah. It's a, and that somebody's going to be mad. I'm interested in preserving the environment. Yeah. Don't get me wrong on that. I'm not all, you know, damn the environment, you can do what you want with your land. Right. Um, but I also want to make sure that you don't destroy the rights of the property owner in the process. Yeah. I think I can help guide Shelter Island into the future with as little harm as possible. And uh, I also have a deep appreciation for Shelter Island's character, which is us, yeah, you know, um, and that has to be tempered by economics. Yep. You know, I think I bring all that to the table.